I appreciate you coming out and this over there. And my 27th or 28th. I appreciate you coming out on my 28th Earth Day. What I'm going to do today is very simple. Because this morning, a priest asked me, how do you go out to teach Christians who are so embedded and indoctrinated in what they've learned and they find it difficult to understand anything else? A scripture was read or something was said, I can't remember. But may I remind you what it says in John 4, from 22 to 24. I would tell you what it says. You can look at it, those of you who are making notes, what it says. We know what we worship. And the 24th verse says, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. My people have a lot of spirit. And you got to understand, they have no truth. I'll tell you how it is. First, you got to find out who you worship. I have a lot of people that I know, some were friends. They're all over on Facebook, reading Psalms and scriptures. Some call themselves pastors, which is the worst thing you can ever call yourself because it, in the book of Jeremiah, it tells you about these pastors. I understand from a leader who also said that Yakub is a white race of people. May I remind you, I don't know Arabic, but at least I know that. Yakub is Jacob, Yusuf is Joseph. And any leader tell you that Jacob is a thief and he's a father of the white race, they are born liars. Because I'll prove it to you in one of my lessons a while ago, and it was repeated that they want to omit the woman who took instructions from God. That two nations are in their womb. And the younger would lead the older, or the older would be led by the younger. And when it comes to the birthright, Esau did not want any birthright. He gave the birthright to the brother. Therefore, Yakub or Jacob is not a thief. Now, let's look at some facts. I'm not going to, my priest told me or this morning, my boss, <laughs> that what is simple to me is too high for them. So I thought about it. If someone says that Whatever it is, he was trying to teach, he was getting a hard time because the people were Christians. And we had a little bit of that on this morning in the forum here. Who was God? Again, I said I had no conversation uh, with Elika Shirley. Who was he? I would not say he was black, but then let's look at it carefully. I have never seen white mud. If you've ever seen white mud, then I would stop my lesson and maybe fly to your country to take pictures. The Quran says, and I said it before, that he was made from black mud. 
The Bible says the dust of the earth, but the Quran says black mud. He made man. And that was not the first man, as I said so many times before. Because if God made this man in his own image and likeness, therefore God must be the first man. And if you're so dumb enough to say God is a spirit, what and who was he before he became a spirit? They heard him walking in the garden and calling out to Adam. Is that a spirit when you hear him walking? Maybe some of you are into voodoo and obia. Probably you will have the answer to that. But I'm telling you, God was the first man. And that's why he made man in his own image and likeness. And if he made a first man black, he had to be black. I'm sorry, Tony. <laughs> but that's the way it is. So you're saying that you're serving God and you're reading the scriptures and you're doing all these things, not even knowing that the Bible that you're reading is not your book. The Psalms that you're reading, every time I see you on Facebook or anywhere else, is not yours. It's not even of your people. It is all Israel. The commandments that you quote is not yours. You can do what the hell you want to do. Those commandments was given to Israel. Go back again and read it. My dear friends, today might be a totally different day because some years ago, my mother could not go to New Year's Eve or Old Year's Night. And I wasn't born in a hospital. The midwife had to be there. And I can understand clearly growing up to find out sometime what a woman go through in giving birth. No, I'm sorry for my old lady, but she's gone now. And she didn't go to heaven. <coughs> you see, again, that's another lie. Because I can tell you, in the book of John, you can find it if you want, because I'm just getting all you saying to clear up these little matters, because I understand that you're taking me out tonight. I don't know where. <clears throat> but you can't go to heaven, because in John, the third chapter, And you can read the 13th verse. And you can see what it says. If you never came down, you can never go up. Simple. If you never came down, you can never go up. Case closed. That's another lie. They tell you you're going to heaven. The whole Christian institution or philosophy is based on lies. No one wants to understand that, but it is true. They give you a white Jesus having dinner you put over your dinner table. And you call it the Last Supper. It wasn't the Last Supper at Passover, we have supper too. It was Jesus' Last Supper. I understand from my son in the back there that Seventh-day Adventists have four Passover in a year. The Bible says in its season. Do you think it's easy to take this message to people who believe in absolute love? And those are the ones that hate you most of all? I was telling my granddaughter, I said, they keep saying sticks and stones would break my bones, but words never do. Sometimes words does more damage than the sticks and stones, because I know the sticks and stones are coming so I can fight like hell. But then the words are coming, it's indoctrinating. And Hitler says that, Field Marshal Goring said that, that the lie repeated all the time eventually becomes the truth. And that is Christianity. 
And once you lie, you have to continue to lie to support the first lie, the second lie, and all the lies. Let me tell you something. The word universal is not for us. I'll give you an idea. Why did this man call Jesus? Why did he come? You have any idea why he came? What I'm going to do, I'm going to go to a book in the New Testament. Some people say, oh, well, Shadrach, you don't like the New Testament. But I'll tell you something. The same thing El Castrilli says, the speaker before me, is when I ask him, why are you going to Revelation and you don't even know who the people of Revelation are? You have to go to the beginning of the book. If you know that Jesus is a Jew, you must find out what is a Jew. Who is a Jew? I'm going to read something. I hope I can today, and because I don't have much time. That's really did what Ella Michael did to me once. These words spake Jesus. Oh, John 17. I'm sorry. Will you go to the back and tell me when to stop? Yeah, either you or Michael. <clears throat> because I don't know your plans. You guys have plans without telling me. They told me I'm going to Jerusalem. <laughs> I think my passport need to be renewed. I don't know. I haven't been traveling. All the last year, for the first time in years, decades, a whole year passed and I haven't traveled anywhere. And these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, how would Jesus say Father and he's God? <laughs> Another lie. Try to understand this. Father, the hour is come, glorify thy son. You and I know who the Son is. That thy Son also may glorify thee, as thou, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, and he should give eternal life, is as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know that only true God and Jesus Christ. Um, in what part of speech is and? Anybody knows? What part of speech? A what? A conjunction. A conjunction. And a conjunction joins two sentences. Am I correct? In my old days, I still have a little bit left in me. It says, a true God and Jesus Christ. Those of you who understand the English language would know the true God and Jesus Christ. You're talking about two different people here. Whom thou hast sent, I have glorified thee. Now, this is a prayer I want for you to listen carefully to. Because it's important for us that call ourselves Israelites and not Hebrew Israelites. Because those of us who are Israelites should understand the truth. And as the speaker before me reminded us, that is the truth. In John 8:32, it says, it is the truth. Thou hast set us free. By God, and I need to be free. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou hast gavest me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. 
don't get it wrong, those of you who are new might misunderstand that. I have manifested thy name into the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou givest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Let me make a point clear. If my son came out of me, he's not me. But he could be my favorite. So if you want to get to me, you ask him. But then that's another matter we have to deal with. I pray for them. Listen carefully, and I think I'm at the ninth verse. I pray for them. I pray not for the world but for them which thou hast given me, for they are mine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father, Keep true thine own name, whose whom thou hast given me, that they might be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Thou yeah, have given them thy word, and the word which they hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even so I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy spirit. You're not following me. Through thy truth, thy word is true. I don't know why so much love is in other philosophies. That's part of my, that's wrong English. If I say other philosophies, it means that we are a philosophy. But we must know there's only one religion. And every one of these philosophies were created by man. You can tell me which man created the Israelite. If you're smart enough to see that, I don't know. There's a man somewhere up there that wrote and chose Israel. He created him. It wasn't Cornelius. It wasn't Joseph, whatever his name is. It wasn't Helen White. It is and was and forever would be the God of Israel. He created Israel. The 18th verses. And thou art sent me into the world even so have I also sent them into the world. For their sakes I sanctify them, that they also might be sanctified through, again, the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me, I would stop there, through their word. I sat there today, and I listened uh, to both of my priests. And I don't know if they mean making me forward, but they both says, they listen to me. And so this nation 
words. If I close this book, and you remember the last line, if God spoke to Moses, Moses spoke to the prophets, the prophet spoke to the anointed in the New Testament, and Jesus spoke to the apostles, what would he tell them? Something else? Thou art a Christian? Who would he believe according to the scriptures? I give them the word, the word of truth. Then what happened? I will believe whosoever they taught. So what would they teach? I would give you an idea. No one is at the back there yet to tell me uh, to stop. So I'll give you an idea. If it says in Daniel 7 9, that is here we're like wool. Why am I looking at a blonde hair, straight hair person and calling God? If it says in the book of Revelation, which I said this morning to come, so in the past he was, and when he's coming again, he will be that same person. Will he hear? Red eyes, not green, not like a cat, but like mine. <laughs> Why then would you have a green eye, blue eye, and a cat eye, man? <laughs> now if you look at all these things, you would see the lie has been magnified only to the wise only to the wise. But let me tell you something. It says again, oh Lord, you know, my priest says, it is so easy for me. But sometimes it's not really easy. Because when you know something, and you know so much, it, what does Festo tell Paul? Anybody knows? Uh -huh. <laughs> I think I feel mad sometimes. <laughs> I'm very mad. Because when I see all these things are happening, you don't even see the walls with these hypocrites. It's so much of my people in them, filling them up, that you can't see the wall. And they question you. When they were a Christian, they don't question the so-called pastor. And they're so rude in calling themselves reverent. It says in Psalms 111, only God is reverent. So they took it now and called themselves reverent. And teaching my people about a love that they don't show to my people. I read once, if my people love each other the way to love Jesus, mm. oh, Lord, <laughs> we would be in a perfect world if they only love each other the way to love Jesus. And I'm talking about a white one. That. Let me tell you how it worked. In Mark 7, somewhere around the 25th verse, I believe, Mark 7, 25 to 30. Anybody have that? I'll tell you what it says anyway. A woman came to him. It was off. It was off? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. A woman came to him and needed help. Yes, it was off. But you know, sometimes I don't need a microphone. That's the power of the truth, you see? That's right. <laughs> I'm sure they heard me all the way to the back because I'm speaking the truth. Mark 7. A woman came to this man and she said she had a problem. Somebody, 
homesick. When you read it, you saw, I don't know, could somebody read it? Mark 7, 25 to 30, go ahead. For a certain woman whose younger daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman- Can Somebody give somebody a microphone. Go ahead. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a, a seraphician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. Okay, I just want for you to we'll go a little bit more. But Jesus said unto her, let the children first be Okay. Them. This is love. This is real love. A woman wants help and go to the universal God who loves everybody. And she's pleading with him to help her daughter. She's not an Israelite. She's Greek. I pass some Greek churches. Sometimes I don't know what they teach. The woman is a Greek. Jesus says, hey, let me tell you something. I have to look after my people first. As a matter of fact, he call her a dog. I have to look after, that's Christian. Those of you who are Christians, you ever read that? <laughs> you never read that? From the nice loving Jesus? who always have his hand clasped on his neck like a cat straightened. He called her a dog, and he said, I have to look after my people first. Then probably I look at you. She pleaded with him. Christians don't look at that. They say she had faith, and she waited. That's not the problem here. The problem is, I am showing you what the scriptures is telling me to tell you. That he is all for his own people. And those of you who keep reading scriptures and all of that and talking about Jesus and being Christian, you're all liars. He is not that. He call her a dog. You know what a dog is in the scriptures? Not the one that you pet and put in your own bed to sleep with you. <laughs> a dog is a dog. <laughs> that is one. Read another one. I'm going to try to get one to you. Matthew, the 15th chapter from the 22nd verse to the 20th year. Go ahead. Matthew 15, 22 to 28. Go ahead. Get a microphone. Your voice is not as big as your grandfather. I don't need a, mic a microphone because I'm speaking the truth. And they bring him unto the place of Golgotha, which is being interpreted the place of the skull. Matthew. Uh, 22 to 28. And, and behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Okay, first let me look at it this way. There's no last name here. The woman of Canaan come to him and um, identified him, son of David. So we have a separation here. You're not one of us, and you're not universal. She came to him when she said, son of David. So they know that this nation was once great. 
because every single nation is coming to this nation for help. Someone says on Facebook once that if you black people believe that that God is yours, how come you were slaves? I say it's a good question. Let us try to answer that now. I told my grandchildren, there's two words to be very careful with, jealousy and envy. They're both different, but they have the same ending. When you do, look at them carefully. Because someone could be jealous because they love you, and they're jealous. But they can also kill you because of that jealousy. Envy. You have an enemy because you have a car that shine, and they have a Volkswagen. They envy you because you have a better looking car. Same result could come, they can kill you. So let, let's look at this situation as we see it, rolling in our own lives. This is not scriptures, brethren. This is life itself. When we were slaves, we were trying to come back to him because then I am positive that you knew why you were slaves. And that's why the songs they used to sing, they had no Jesus inside. They were praying directly to the man upstairs. And then suddenly they start putting Jesus inside because the Christian, sometimes I don't like says the white man, because they were also Quakers that help us. But I'm talking with the leaders of the white man, or Christians. This is what they did. And we can't let that just go. We were slaves because God doesn't like us. Jealousy. Jealousy. I heard a scripture read last night, but one of my favorite scriptures, Ezekiel 16. Anybody remember that? It's a very important scripture. You look like the Amorites, and you do the things like everybody else, excepting, and I'm a very jealous God. And I need you to come home, and you're not coming home. And he was like my father. My father beat me every two seconds. I think it was good because it made me tough. He's jealous. And you could hear him crying sometimes. Crying for Rachel's children, come home. But no, you're going to serve in a false god. I'm going to punish you because you take my love for granted and you share it with all the other gods. And some people say there's only one God, another Christian lie to hook you. And Yaqub is not a white race. You are the children of Yaqub, known as Jacob. God of Israel did not envy you. You had nothing. He was giving you everything. But he was jealous of you, serving another God. I'm going home with Alec Astray one evening. And as we're driving in this beautiful, beautiful city, I'm saying, Tony, look at the lights, look at all that one. And he says, Ellie, you admire your light? I say, yes. This is what they're doing for their God. Where is ours? I put up my lights at Passover. Brethren say, 
all the white putter of Christmas lights. <laughs> How the hell is it Christmas lights? I am putting up lights for my Passover. I am decorating my own house. Not your house, my house. And you would question me to ask me why am I putting up Christmas lights? So when I'm going and I'm looking all that, with uh, our house is decorated too. You need to know when I look at that and I said, look what they're doing, eh? And then he asked me, when is it coming down? He said, sometime around the six, because I educated myself to these other gods. Just so I can tell you how to make a comparison. He understood now why I was looking at them. He thought I was admiring them. Ah, yes, I was. How beautiful and how wonderful. And every time their time come around, they worship their God. It looks nice. What happened to my God? What happened to all those who say they're Israelite? What happened to them? What are they doing for my God? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Because I'll tell you something. Maybe one or two of you would betray me again because that's the way it is. It would never go how it was supposed to go. I told my priest I'm going to die next year and I don't know what kind of a future he would have because they would kill him. They're dealing with black people. And it's not these black people here now. They've been like this ever since. Moses is up there talking to God to help them. He come down to have orgies. <laughs> and the billing calf. <laughs> And probably playing 50 cents rip. <laughs> He's up there seeing all the miracles, seeing the bush born, seeing all of this thing happening. And he come down. You believe they'll be praying, waiting for him to come down, waiting for him to say what the mighty God of Israel message that he gave? No. Take off your earrings. We're going to have fun. And it was not only your earring. Take off your clothes. You think it's only now they're doing this? The leaders or people with this message? It's been happening all the time. So if you believe that your history starts with slavery, you are wrong. You can get to another part of slavery if you don't understand us. If you do not understand what is happening to us as we go through this world, we can make the same mistakes again. Because that's how it is. There's no people as rude as black people. No people that do not take instruction seriously like black people. They always seem to know. You raise them and they become bigger than you. You give them food and they take it out of their mouth and feed you and say they feed you. Those of you who understand your lifeblood, because we are spiritual people. It doesn't matter how you twist it. We're going to still be a spiritual people. And whatever we do, we'll suffer for it in some way or the other. It doesn't matter how you'll suffer for it. Maybe not here, maybe but over there. Somewhere you have to suffer. I can tell you something. 
when the disciples said to send her away, you believe those disciples were bad. Master, why are you talking to them? They're not of us. It was very clear then about the difference of the people. Now it's no difference because the lie is so huge in your mind that you believe the lie more than you believe the truth. Even though what it says in John 8, 32, it is the truth that will set us free, we still want to be enslaved. We still want to be enslaved. Let me give you a difference. In Luke, the eighth chapter, everybody know that? I'm sure everybody know. To see all the young guys talk about it. Luke 8. Milan is sleeping. Sorry. <laughs> Luke 8, read from the 42nd verse. See what it says. For he had, only one, he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay a dying but as he went, the people from him. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had Let me explain that to you. A man came to him and says, the daughter he loved so much, she's sick, she probably died. Master, come and help her. He's always willing because it's his own people. He's going. And as you go, and what happened? Which had spent all, all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stayed. Okay. Some people said, Christians taught this, that she touched it deliberately so she could be healed, and then they talk about faith. The Bible is so clear, it's a little bit of understanding. He's in a crowd. He's in a crowd and people are drugging him. She just happened to touch him and recognize that, my goodness, let me touch it again, who? It's gone. She didn't touch him to have faith that your Christian pastor would tell you. He's a liar. It shows that this happened and the virtue went out. You and I know what our virtue is. We don't need to talk about it. But what did he call the woman when everybody is saying, oh, why are you saying somebody touch you? Everybody is touching you. The woman knew that she was caught. And she identified herself. OK. It's that time in the month and I touch you. 12 years I've been going through there. As soon as I touch you, Look what happened. I'm free. And then what did he say after that? Go ahead, read. And he said unto her, Daughter, be oh. not Could you read that again? He said unto her, Daughter. Okay. No dog. No nothing. This is the difference. He didn't call her no dog. The disciple didn't say send her away. He called her daughter. That's the type of God that we have. He's a people's God, his people. He loves his people. It is the people that don't love him. He loves his people. The Canaanite woman, call her name. The Greek, call her a dog. The woman who stopped him from doing something so very important, he called her daughter. Go, go, daughter, go to her. Because it's the personality that we're missing. Every person in the scriptures, from Genesis to Revelation, know the power of our God except in us. What did a harlot says? 
when she hid them, when they went to spy out the land. She didn't say, when you go pray to God for me. They said, pray to your God. If we don't understand that, we have a long way to go. You can't show me nowhere in the scripture where God is universal, and you can't show me nowhere in the scriptures when he says I'm a Christian, nowhere in the scriptures where he says, Israel is not my people. When you're bad, like it says in the book of Jeremiah, he scolds you, and he punishes you, because that's what my father used to do to me. So let's try and understand how family work. I would always discipline my children. Doesn't matter what. They can hate me, whatever it is, but if they're 90 years of age, they're still my children. It doesn't matter. And my children are bad. They're terribly bad. But there's no envy there. There's no hate. Because they're still my children. But that would not take away me being a disciplinarian. Because I was born that way. I was well trained. I was not dragged up. I know some people say you're a street kid. Yes, but I had certain amount of more qualities. I think the God of Israel put me there so that I can learn from the streets and learn everywhere how I can survive, how I can help people. Because that's what I was doing when I was on the street. Everyone was coming to me for help. And sometimes it's not for money. Just someone to talk to. Someone to lean on. So it is important that when we look at the relationship that we have with our God, we got to understand who he is. So don't say, I was a slave because God don't like me. And I hope it comes to you like a little phrase I heard some time ago, bit by bit, piece by piece. I don't know who can remember that. Tell me, bit by bit and piece by piece. If we understand, we're not expecting you to say, oh my goodness, I'm an Israelite. But every time you put your head down in that pillow and your spirit leave <coughs> and bring back whatever it does, let it be positive. And try to see if you can return bit by bit and piece by piece. Am I correct? Yep. Claudia, yes, am I correct? Absolutely. I am, eh? Let me put this to you first. Apart from going to heaven, that we can't go because I give you the scriptures, you know, most of the things I teach is not from my head. Some people say, Elder Shadrach said that, Elder Shadrach, no. What my father, through his agents and his prophets, put in this book. When others can't reveal it, when others can't understand it and don't have the wisdom to see it, I do. And that's the difference. That is the difference. So when they would say, I know Jehovah Witness people are good at that. It doesn't matter if you're Jehovah Witness, Catholic, Evangelical, Christian, but whatever it is, it comes from one source, Christianity. And it's man-made Cornelius. And the cross, the most deadliest thing you can ever have, to keep you back. My mother wasn't very smart, but I'll tell you what happened. At one time, somebody said when I called her neighbor baby, 
You got to buy a cross, you go to church. I was sitting on my mother's lap, and she told me, she said, don't you ever buy no cross and put on you. We have enough crosses in our house. Sometimes we don't have no food. We have enough crosses. Don't go out and spend your money and buy cross. We have, I didn't even understand because I am saying my mother is not smart. But that is what she knew. Don't buy no cross. We have enough crosses in the house. Sometimes we don't have no food. Well, you can go buy a cross for If you don't have food for two days, the cross is going to give us no food for 10 days. So, this is what we have to try to understand when we try to see who we are, when some institution would tell you, if you join us, you would be in the 144,000. Jennifer told me that. <laughs> How many times did I say they lie? About five times, huh? Ten. Ten, yeah. <laughs> That's another lie. <laughs> You're going to tell me all those Israelites that passed on from the time of Moses, God couldn't find 144,000? Are you telling me that God couldn't find twelve? You don't even know your tribe. They have some ignoramuses to tell you you're, you're born in American tribe, you're born this way as tribe. How could you? Do you know the history of these people? They never kept you together. So how are you going to say this one is from this tribe and this one person commented, which tribe do I belong to? <laughs> You're an American tribe. <laughs> There's no way that you can trace any tribe anywhere.
Get up on my knees, I take my bow and then I pray Thank you for the blessings that's provided every day Lord, you took my hand, I watch you guide me through the rain The glory and the power ask me how I can't explain And so I praise you through the smiles and through the pain I gotta bring my gifts to you and pile them at the gate uh, Frankincense and murder, sanctify your holy place So Lord, I host, my trust is only in your name
Listen, bro. Okay, no, 